Hey guys, it's Lauren here and I'm back with another crafty clean out video. If you haven't heard about my crafty clean out videos, a 2021 goal of mine is to detox my craft room. I want to clean out supplies that have been sitting around for years and if I can't use it, it's out of here. So over the next 12 months, I hope my crafty clean out videos inspire you to dig out old scrap and supplies and together we can make some fun, fab, fresh layouts. I've decided to create a hashtag you and the hashtag is Lauren's Crafty Clean Out because I want you guys to share with me your crafty clean out layouts and if you use that hashtag I'll go out I'll go and check out what you guys have been doing with your old supplies and um, we can see what we're all each of us have been up to so check out what I'm using here can you guys remember a sassafras lass my goodness a sassafras like I've been a scrapbooker for 20 years and sassafras was one of those scrapbooking brands that were there right back in those early days and I had these little bits here sitting around I couldn't part with them they went from I love them to oh they're vintage to now with my crafty clean out videos hey they got to go they are got to be used and so I thought it's so interesting because my scrapbooking style over the last 20 years has changed so much what I would have done with them back then is completely different to what I'm doing with them right now we never used mixed media way back in the day and so I thought we need to mix media this sassafras lass and see what it can turn into. So as you can see, I have these gorgeous photos of my two little cheeky nephews who I adore. And they're beautiful black and white photos. We're in Sydney Harbour on a Ferris wheel and this is what was going on. And um, and I thought this sassafras photo um, collection is perfect for these cheeky boys. And yeah. So I thought I'm going to use a bit of mixed media. I'm going to do some tearing and some layering. So I capture a little bit of the, each of the collection. And I've got how cool are these like massive die cut alphas. Um, I just <laughs> I love them. <laughs> They're chunky and that like old, old school kind of font. And I thought that it's perfect for this, these photos. So I'm just pulling out some ideas I've done a bit of tearing I've got a bit of an idea in my head and now I'm just playing around I hadn't thought too much about it I just knew that I want to use up these bits and once they're once they're used they're they're out of here so I thought well, let's see where we're going so this is just a little die cut pop it sheet like this is the way ephemera I think used to come <laughs> way back in the day they never used to put in little packets and pop them out for you we had to pop it out yourself but how cute and fun are these stars and buttons and you know like really if you think about it they're not too far off trend at the moment like there are companies out there doing these similar similar styles of embellishments which I thought was um, pretty funny when these um, supplies would be at least 15 years old but anyway so yeah so I'm using my edges dresser now I'm going to ruffle up these edges because one way to bring a layout to life and your pattern papers to life is to give it a bit of dimension and already just by placing that down you can see how it's taken it from that real flat flat kind of look and it sort of brought it to life by a bit of tearing a bit of distressing and rolling up of the edges and what that does do is when I use the mixed media and I use their um, stamps which you'll see me use uh, in a section it really defines that level which is the base page with that mixed media and then that next layer of those papers coming on top of there it really gives that little bit of dimension without creating literally too much dimension in the process so as you can see I've had this old distressor and it's needs to be replaced because it's giving me some like extra distress going on but anyway it looks fabulous and as you can see it's just sort of popped it up and I'm really seeing that defined pattern papers kind of jumping off the page there I'm just now I've got my idea that's how I want it to go and I'm just marking with a pencil there my um the base page so I don't go too crazy with mixed media and put it places where it doesn't need to be so using some of the Pink Fresh Studio little cube ink um, things, I'll have to, 
uh, I'm not sure what colours I use. I'm pretty sure I held them up at the beginning of the video. I just stamp it onto a stamping platform that you see there and I just add a little bit of water to my brush which turns it into a bit more of a liquid mixed media. I've also pre-gessoed my page with some clear gesso and I also spritzed it with a water water um, sprayer just so that when that media, um, that ink went on top of it, it would sort of help like make it a bit flowy so it didn't sort of really um, just stay in that one spot by adding those different um, little bits of element just help them help the mixed media move around and give the, that different dimension also adding some flicks as that's something I do on all mine because all my layouts and little flicks of color just to help that transition from the color into the white page and um, going from there. As you saw, I've also been doing some drying off in between. These inks are quite reactive, um, especially when you um, put a bit of like water on them so I try to distinguish the colors and not have them blend too much I try to dry off in between and then I work that media really quite quickly and try and dry off again um, some of the colors as you can see I've got a bit of green forming in there when the blue and the yellow um, kind of like hit which is fine because that's part of the color palette so I'm not too worried about that at all um, but that's what you need to be mindful when you're dealing with mixed media and blending and things along those lines is that you may get some color transition and like if you're not like super au fait with the whole color wheel thing and what happens when some colors mix with other colors um, which I'm not complete 100% I'm not sometimes I'd mix something and go oh look what happened I get a nice surprise purple happened <laughs> so but if you aren't you know confident with that you know it might be worth having a bit of a play with some mixed media and your colors to see what happens um, or get out the old trusty color wheel and it will tell you exactly what's going to happen when colors mix and what colors to mix and what colors not to mix I have there's been many a time where I've achieved the color brown and that <laughs> that is from um, from not um, looking at color theory but I don't tend to mind and I'm just playing this is just a hobby for me just to do a bit of escapism and you know sort of drown myself in a memory and just think about only paper and products for a little bit of a little while a bit of a brain break from you know life and yeah, so I found these stamps. They were just sitting up in my craft supplies. I went through them because I'm going to, I've got a crop coming up. And so I went through all my stamps and I pulled these ones out. I thought, oh, these are kind of fun. They kind of look like um, string, you know, like a cotton when you kind of wind them round and things like that. And I thought, I'm just going to leave them just in the top of my little desk there. And when the feeling overcomes me I'll grab them out and stamp a little bit here and there and that's what I've done here so once again it's just adding a different texture or a different little element to the page hardly can see them but it just helps form that um, that completion that kind of completion of a layout and when you're doing mixed media having different elements like that sometimes they're a little bit fun and it really just highlights that mixed media work on your layout so here I am I've got these gorgeous photos they're um, three by four inch so heart to half of four by six which is a standard size photo um, and I'm just going to mount those with some pattern papers and some a white border here just to help bring them to life I'm going to ruffle up those edges um, and I because what I want to want to do is make sure that the photo stands out and it's really the main feature because things are going to get really busy here now when I go I've got to use that up my crafty clean out I'm going to use up all these embellishments I'm going to start sticking stuff everywhere so what I don't want to do is lose my photos in all that busyness and all that fun stuff of those embellishments so I always do a couple of um, layers of um, borders around them roughing them up so the edges kind of look like they're cuddling the photo and as you'll see it sort of just highlights them and make sure that they're not getting lost there using black and white photos especially when you've got really contrasting colors like this it was at night the boys were wearing dark and light colors so 
you know, as you can see, the little fellow in the back there pulling the funny face, that's our gorgeous archer. Um, he was wearing that black with the white shoulders on it. So I knew, and then our, our lovely Will there with his tongue hanging out, <laughs> he was wearing a dark beanie. So I knew the black would really pop and their gorgeous skin. I knew if I played around with the contrast when doing my editing, that I would really get that nice white sharp skin and that black and white would really pop. So there are some photos that are really great for black and white photos. And when you're doing lots of mixed media, those are the ones that you kind of think, yep, yeah, this could be really good because I want to really play around with that mixed media product, but I don't want to lose my photos in all that. So if you haven't seen my first crafty clean out video, I use these little um, little two by two inch squares. They were from a We Are Memory Keepers um, collection. I think it was called Just Oh inked rose or something like that you can check that out in my um, crafty clean out videos I've created a playlist for them as well and um, I'm just going to use those up as well by adding some layers there they were the perfect color the green and the orange and as you can see just by adding those little little in, like two inch bits and bobs there around the photo once again it's sort of added that third level of layering behind my photo to really draw your eye to them um, and when I start putting the embellishments on if I hadn't done that the embellishments would kind of start to blur and all transition into sort of one one kind of theme so I want to make sure that I'm doing some pops of color some pops of ensuring I'm still sticking with those same color theme and color tones so it all matches and comes together um, but I really want those darker colors and those lighter colors and I really want to surround those photos to help jump them off the page there uh, photo tabs and things like that also are you know really great for that so here I am now thinking mm, where am I going to put these um, titles and as you saw when I was sort of laying it all out I um, had a different idea of where the titles would go and that sometimes happens I'm a person who likes to set my layouts out first and get my eye into it and get you know a bit of an idea flowing often it changes often it changes from what I've put out there the first time and that's fine because that's part of the creative process for me it just gives me a guide um, to sort of kick it off and I guess with that it also gives me the confidence to go yeah I know what I'm doing even though it ends up looking completely different and um not what I had planned initially, but it just gives me that confidence to go, yeah, this is going to work and that, that basic set out is um, definitely going to sort of flow for the page, if that sort of makes sense. So just using some wet glue here. This is one of my favourite ones. It's got a fine tip. It's a nouveau clear. Um, it dries clear. It's white and then it dries clear. It's got a fine tip on it, so it's perfect for those sort of little embellishments that you want to pop up the edges and um, yes, I really kind of rough those up, adding some more dimension here. I thought I'd pop that title up a little bit with some foam squares just to help it jump off the page and sort of not lose that title. And then I'm going to kind of start layering my title in and behind my photo and my layers there. Um, you're going to, some like I might, as you can see, I've cut off some of that O, but as long as the majority of the letter seen, you tend to know what the title is. So don't be frightened of hiding a fair chunk of a letter when you when you look at it, as long as you can just still see, you know what the word is, it's done its job. So tucking in and layering in your um, letters so they hide and sort of pop out of places is a fun way to sort of bring that in layering and that embellishing um, to life, um, especially when you're using sort of this mixed media style scrapbooking. Okay, so I've got some black and white photos and I know black is like a scary colour to do on your layouts. It is. I, you always kind of freak out because it's like really dark and bold and and crazy. And But I knew that I just needed a couple little pops of black on there to help those photos um, just sort of settle down in the page and help them kind of blend a little bit 
um, amongst all that. So that enjoy was there and I sat that next to that darker orange as well. So that kind of helped that as well. And now I'm just using up some, a part of like my stash that needs to go, my crafty clean out stash. Um, I've got some, these stickers, they're Heidi Swap and I think they were from the Colour Fresh collection. And I'm just going to go for it. I'm just going to be using things up. So I'm just sticking stickers on everywhere. But what that does, what that did is, really sort of soften that definition between those different papers without taking away from that pattern but it's really sort of softened that and gave it another kind of embellishment feature and all those words really resonated with me um, about those cheeky nephews of mine. I'm pulling out here some super old uh, Pink Fresh Studio. This is from probably their uh, 20... Uh, maybe 2019 Christmas collection, these stickers, but like these little alpha ball, alpha, blah, sorry, tongue tied. Um, these little chipboard alphas, but they're really sweet because they've got that like a little bit of gold foiling on them as well. So it adds that little bit of definition. And they also had these little star, chipboard star elements in there as well. And so I'm just going to grab those and help those star elements that I've already got on the page and once again adding that extra dimension with the chipboard so they're kind of jumping up a little bit as well so they're all, all kind of just looking for ways to create dimension using different products to sort of bring your layout to life so I'm just going to finish off now with a bit of journaling and I just love how my sassafras last layout came but turned out I think it's really interesting to pull out your old stuff it's not the newest it's not on trend it's not but you can make a layout that is super cool using vintage scrapbook and supplies so thank you sassafras last because I love it I love it all right guys take care I hope you've enjoyed my process video happy scrapping bye